Now the un unusual thing is that uh, this skull actually had part of the body attached to it as well. So usually what we find is that when we're digging these things out of the ground is that we'll find bits of the body and no head and very, very rarely we'll find just a head, but unfortunately with no body attached. So the fact that this guy had both allows us to close that gap or they have this overlap between the body and the head that will unravel a lot of the species diversity. So how many species of these long-necked pleases are also swimming around here in this outback ocean 100 million years ago. So when I, the station owner of, uh, of this property texted me a picture of this skull that uh, she had found uh, just from digging a little bit into the surface, it was just incredible because all we've seen so far, we've got one skull in the collection at the museum, it's a, not a very nice specimen, it's quite squashed and it's got no body attached to it. So the fact that we had a, suddenly had a beautifully preserved three-dimensional skull with a body, this means that we're going to do so much more. We still, there's still so much we don't know about these animals that were swimming in this ancient inland sea 100 million years ago including well, how many species of these long-necked plesiosaurs, for instance, were there. So something as simple as that, just how many species there were, we don't really know exactly. So this animal here that has a head with a body attached to it, allows us to unravel some of that species diversity. So we'll get a much better understanding of how did these early members of this group called the Lasmosaurs evolve uh, in the early Cretaceous, per Cretaceous period, and also how many species were there around at the time.